Welcome, welcome, patrons. If you've played Dragon Age Origins or read the novel Last Flight, you probably have a good idea about what a blight tends to look like. A lot of Thetis has been hugely affected by these events, and to understand this world, you need to know the blights, the destruction it caused, and the politics it created. As a quick side note, there's so much lore involving the blight. Making one video on this topic would probably be its own movie. And although I do eventually want to go over all the things, like the origin of the blight, different types of darkspawn, effects on the taint of living beings, grey wardens, and much, much more, let's first form a basic knowledge of the history of the blights. At this point, it would be good to define what a blight actually is. The word blight is used in many ways in the series, as a name for an event, as a name for a disease, and even as a curse word. Blight as a disease is also known as the taint, which for obvious reasons is not a commonly used word anymore in the modern Dragon Age novels and games, but whatever. Uh, think of this as a highly infectious disease and something that only affects living things. The exact effects depend on the creature, but for the most part, the creature is mutated and turns into a crazed monster. What we're going to be focusing on today is the blight as an event, which is when the darkspawn find, release, and then taint one of the old gods who are buried in prisons underground. The tainted old god then becomes an archdemon who leads the darkspawn in a war against any living being. Another thing to note is that the archdemon is very hard to kill. If killed by anything other than a grey warden, the archdemon actually will rise again. Out of the seven old gods that Tevinter used to worship, five have been currently killed. Dumat, Zazakel, Toth, Anderal, and Urthemiel. The final two, Razakel and Lusakan, are sleeping in their underground prisons. From these points, I'm sure you have a ton of questions, like why only a Grey Warden to kill the Archdemons? What happens after the Old Gods have been defeated? And why are the Old Gods underground to begin with? These are all very good questions, and some of them we don't actually know the answers to yet. But for now, let's just move on. Origin of the Blight I know I said the origin of the Blight deserves its own video, and it still does, but for the rest to make sense, we need to know this. The Chantry's holy book, called the Chant of Light, states that the Blight began when the Taventure Magisters broke into the Golden City in the Fade. They were then cast out by the Maker, turning the Golden City black and bringing back the Blight into this world. This is known as the Second Sin, and is believed to have happened in negative 395 Ancient. The Tevinter Chantry differs from the story by just denying it completely. They claim that the two events were unrelated, and that the Darkspawn were always going to attack even if the Magisters didn't break into the Golden City. This has also led to a long, long history of the Chantry painting Tevinter as the bad guys, because they are the one who started the Blight. Again, there is so much more to this tale, but we are going to need much more time to really sink your teeth into it. So for now, those points are all we need. So starting at the very beginning, the first Blight. Although it's unknown how long exactly it was between the second sin and the first blight, both happened in the same year, negative 395 ancient. At first, the dark spawn just focused on the deep roads, destroying the Dwarven Kingdom. Taig after Taig fell to the blight, and the once mighty roads that spanned all over Thetis now belong to the dark spawn. This is the collapse of the Dwarven Empire, and in the end, only four Taig survived the blight Orzammar, Kalsharok, Gundar, and Hormak. Because the deep roads were so overrun by the Darkspawn, supply chains and communication lines between the four Tigs were cut off. Because of this, each city decided to elect its own king, each of whom was under the High King of Orzammar. In negative 255 Ancient, the paragon Caradon discovered a method to forge a living weapon, golems, to help destroy the Darkspawn. They end up being the dwarves' biggest weapon against the Blight. Caradon would later vanish in negative 248 Ancient, taking the secret of making golems with him and forcing the dwarves to use the limited amount of golems they had and no more. Anyway, the surface didn't really take much notice on the plight of the dwarves until it spilled out into the Tevinter Imperium in negative 380 Ancient, about 15 years after the dwarves were first attacked by the Darkspawn. At this time, many of the Imperium still worshipped the old gods, and it was more than a massive morale hit to see someone they worshipped at the forefront of the battle, even more so that the other old gods remained silent. Priests of the old gods were murdered, and rebellions against the faithful of the old gods began to tear to venture apart from within, weakening Thetis' largest country. The Grey Wardens, which would eventually become Thetis' heroes, were formed in negative 305 Ancient, 90 years after the Blight began, by people of all races and ethnicities, giving up everything to take a vow to stop the Blight, no matter the cost. The first battle that the Grey Wardens fought was the Battle of Nordbotten, in which it's described that the Wardens swooped in on the back of Griffins, fighting the spawn like no one had seen before, some taking on ten or more enemies at once. This became the first time in the First Blight that things started to look up for the people of Thetis. 
The early warden saw great success, even allowing a group of Anders soldiers to kill Dumont, only to see him rise again shortly after. This is when they figured out that only Grey Wardens could slay the Archdemon. Eventually, a negative 203 Ancient, lasting a total of 192 years, during the Battle of the Silent Plains, Dumont was slain for good by an unknown Warden. And by negative 195 Ancient, 200 years after the start of the Blight, the remaining Darkspawn forces were killed or pushed back into the Deep Roads. After the Blight ended, the Wardens used this victory to sign treaties to secure power and authority from other nations during a Blight, although records show that few believe that the Blight would actually ever happen again. Even after the first Blight ended, the Darkspawn continued to attack the four cities of the Dwarves. In Negative 45 Ancient, the High King of Orzammar, King Threestone, ordered the sealing off of the Deep Roads. While Orzammar had an opening to the surface for trade, the other three did not, and Gundar and Hormak fell within ten years of the beginning of the seal, and Cal Shirok was also believed lost when the last of the Deep Road openings was sealed in negative 15 Ancient, 380 years after the Blight began. The Second Blight About 200 years after the First Blight ended, another one begins. In 1-5 Divine, the Second Blight begins in the Anderfels, hitting the city of Hosberg first. The old god Zazakel moved the Horde west, then east, and ended up controlling most of the Anderfels. At this point, Deventer was in control of the area, and once Anderfels was covered in Darkspawn, they abandoned it to protect their main country. After finding out about the danger, the first emperor and founder of Orlai, Cordelia Strachan, became a large ally of the Wardens, eventually saving the Warden Fortress of Weishaupt from the Darkspawn in 133 Divine, which would later cause the Wardens to officially convert to Dracov's new religion, worshipping the Maker, the Chantry. During the Battle of Cumberland in 116 Divine, Draken's first major victory, he enlisted the help of the mages and permitted them to use their full might against the Darkspawn. This would eventually lead to the creation of the Circles and the signing of the Navarran Accord. Meanwhile, the elven people of the Dales were called upon by Draken to help fight the Blight, and they denied any aid. This would eventually cause tension between Thetis and the elves, and lead to the downfall and Orlesian rule of the Dales. And then jumping over to Ferelden, in 140 Divine, an Alamari warrior named Hafter was able to unite the tribes in Ferelden against the Darkspawn. This eventually led to the unification and creation of Ferelden as a country. Together, the Wardens and Orlaic worked together to save the Anderfels. Although Draken eventually died in 145 Divine from old age, and his son did not see the same success as his father, the Chantry remained. Eventually, in 195 Divine, 90 years after the start of the Second Blight, Zazakel was slain in Starkhaven by the Grey Warden named Corin. It's said that Corin's lover, a mage named Neria, sacrificed herself to save Corin from the attack of a Darkspawn. This allowed him to take the killing blow on the Archdemon, which also ended his life. After the Archdemon was defeated, the Grey Wardens once again pushed the Darkspawn underground. The Third Blight about 115 years after the Second Blight ended, the old god Toth arose in 310 Towers, coming in southern Tevinter and northern Orlais. It was also reported that it was in more numbers than the previous two Blights. The Darkspawn would spread north, hitting the cities of Marnispel and Virantium, and then south to Shorno and Montesamard. The Wardens were quick to organize and fight back on both the northern and the southern fronts, so the Darkspawn traveled east in 318 Towers to the Free Marches all across the Meanter River. At first, both the Imperium and Orlais focused on their own lands, ignoring the Free Marches, but pressure from the Grey Wardens forced them to lend aid. The armies of both countries met in Hunter Fell in 325 Towers, where Toth finally fell, this blight only lasting 15 years. Although it's unknown which Grey Warden slew the Archdemon, it is known that they died doing so and is suggested that the Warden was male. The Free Marchers were grateful of the rescue, but it was soon abused by both armies, who occupied both Navarra and Hunter Fell. Both would eventually regain their independence before the end of the Tower's Age. The Fourth Blight This Blight is unique in that it's the center of the novel The Last Flight. As such, there's a lot of details about the Fourth Blight that won't be covered in this video. What I'm about to go into is basic knowledge that the book assumes you know at the start of the novel. The old god Andoral awoke in 512 Exalted, and the Darkspawn rose in the northeast and northwest reaches of the continent, where Antiva was soon overrun. Darkspawn then turned their attention to the Free Marches, Ravain, and then the Anderfels, where Hosberg was once again attacked. This time, Tevinter outright refused to send any aid, still coming off of the exalted marches against them, where the Thetis Chantry attacked the newly formed Tevinter Chantry over religious differences. Arlai also did as little as possible. 
The fight against the Fourth Blight was championed by a mighty elven warden, Garahel, who led the people of the Anderfels and an army of the Wardens to the city of Hosburg, freeing it from the Darkspawn Siege, and then marched those forces to Starkhaven in 520 Exalted, where he would organize an alliance between the minor kings of the Free Marches. This united army was led by the Wardens, and they held Free Antiva during the last battle of the Blight in 524 Exalted. This was located in the city of Ainsley, where Anderal fell, 12 years after the Fourth Blight began. Like so many other wardens before him, Garahel died striking the killing blow on Anderal, becoming the first known elf to do so. After the Battle of Aisley, it was rumored that so many Darkspawn were killed that there was no way they'd ever return to Thetis again. Also after this blight, the Griffins, who were the symbol of the wardens and one of their biggest strengths, became extinct. The Fifth Blight now the entire first blight is contained within the game Dragon Age Origins, and as I want to make this video with as little spoilers as possible, mostly in part because the actual event of the fifth blight kind of depends on your choices in the game, I want to refrain from saying much about this blight, but I will say this. It started in the Kokari Wilds in Ferelden, 406 years after the end of the fourth blight. The old god that rose up was Urthemiel, and the entire event actually lasted a little over a year, starting in 930 Dragon and ending in 931 Dragon, making it the shortest blight to date. And if you want to know what exactly happened, I don't really want to say it in this video, but eventually I do want to make a video explaining everything in Dragon Age Origins, that way if you want to skip the game you can, but for right now, go play the game! And that, honored patrons, is the basic knowledge of the history of the Blights. I want to touch more about this soon, but for next week, let's talk about the Elven Gods and the Velocene. Do you still have lingering questions? Proof that I'm wrong? Comments about your own fan theory? Feel free to tweet me at at on Twitter, or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. Doresh Shiral.